Yo, yo, it's ODB, our lifestyle podcast. And I want to do a wrap up video based upon the video that I posted earlier this week. Uh, again, I told you guys I'm going to come out with new content uh, as much as I can this year. And that includes the video side as well, of course, here for our lifestyle podcast. The video that I that I published um, earlier this week, I thought it was cool because, you know, obviously it was more of the aspect of, of linking up with Tony, bringing the lift here on the rollback, getting the lift into the shop and kind of putting it together. But editing it, I realized that I didn't, you know, just kind of in the, in the moment, I didn't take a lot of video of the installation. So I kind of want to talk about that. So it's been a few weeks since we've had this thing bolted down and it is perfect. So uh, I'll give you a couple quick updates here. Number one, I mentioned the fence. The fence has since been fixed. So that was a good thing. Okay, number two, the lift. So this is really what I wanna concentrate on here. I did take a few photos that I'll talk about the install. Um, if, if you're in the market for a lift or you've ever been curious, just like I was on, you know, how difficult is it, you know? You see these big pieces of metal and you're like, man, this has got to be just a pain to install. It's really not that bad. Uh, a couple things I'll point out. I bought a drill bit on Amazon. Okay, it ended up not being the right bit for the correct drill. I would suggest whatever bit you end up getting, make sure you obtain it for the correct drill. Okay. Okay, this guy had when Tony bought this lift from him he had given Tony this fancy dancy okay which that's not for the lift but um this basically says HD7P um I didn't realize that Tony had gotten this until like we were starting getting getting ready to install I had googled and I found around page 60, I had found, which this is probably the same one I was looking at, the instructions, and I did wanna kinda of point this out, okay? What this basically says here is with this four post lift, uh, they called for these anchors, wedge anchors I think they're referred to, at four and three quarters, uh, the bit uh, three quarters, and then you, know, you torque them to 85 to 95, okay? Um, what I'll tell you is on this lift, four, four and three quarters, those bolts weren't as hard, they weren't as easy to find. Okay, and I say bolts, hardware, wedge anchors, whatever you wanna call them. Um, I did find them through Fastenal, and Fastenal lets you do online order, and then you do in-store pickup, it's super simple, okay? Um, the next thing, Okay, the anchors obviously are important. My buddy Fitzmagic, who I mentioned, he came by and he's a great dude. And what uh, what we what we ended up doing was he drilled, I think, um, out of the 16, he probably drilled 12, maybe 13 of the holes, okay? Um, I, I have only, I think, just a real quick short four second video I took of him drilling. Um, but here's what I wanna tell you, okay? If you're gonna do an install, it's not that hard, okay? Those 16 anchor holes, they probably took maybe 20 seconds a piece to drill and we drilled down about mm, four inches, three and three and three quarters to four. What we did was, I didn't recall, I'm pretty sure I have a four inch slab, okay? So what we did is we didn't wanna risk going all the way through it. So we took the bit, the bit that I bought wasn't the correct bit for his drill. I forget if he had a Makita or what he had, but um, it, it, that bit wouldn't fit in there. And he goes, hey man, I do this for a living. I have all these bits, okay? So he has a three quarter bit. What we did was we took on the bit, we put the anchor up to it, and we knew how much of the anchor we wanted to have hanging out. You know, approximately, that one's out a little bit more than that one, don't get me wrong, okay? But 
what we did is we put a piece of tape. You'll see people talk about that. We just put a piece of masking tape, duct tape, whatever. And we went down on the very first one and we're like, yep, we didn't go through it because we didn't want to, you know, you don't want to go through all the way through the slab, but trust me, it's simple. By the time we started drilling, it was like not even 20 seconds probably per hole. That bit just, it's, a, I think a carbite is what they call for. And um, that thing just went straight down. You just hold it 20 seconds or so. And he even brought um, a, a, a vacuum powered, uh, battery powered vacuum. And he was literally vacuuming while he was drilling. And as soon as we pulled the bit out, got the rest of the debris out, boom, was already drilling the next one. So, I mean, 20 seconds a piece, and he did three of them on each. And then on, because this lift was, you know, taken down and moved, we did have to, um, to get into one of the holes based upon where the bit was at. We had to kind of move the locks and things like that, but it was real simple. It just, you know, we did the three on each, took a quick break and went back and then did the other four. Okay. So use the instructions, follow the instructions. Um, you're going to see again, um, for the most part, there's not much sticking out. These are all torque to specs. And um, the wedge anchors, as they're called, they came with the washers, as you'd imagine. Um, what I did was I took a hammer that he brought. I had one as well. And when I put it down in there, they kind of slide in a little bit and you just tap the top. What I typically would do is loosen this so that it's, it's even or that the nut is just above it. Tap on it. Sometimes it took five, six taps, maybe eight taps. That was down. And then I went with a um, standard, I think it was a three quarter ratchet and I tightened them all down first. And that was, you know, basically got four in on each. And then I went back with the torque wrench and I had it like at I think 90. And then I kind of went back and I was like, okay, well, you know, 90, you know, you're, you're really getting after it. And it calls for 85 to 95, and I think I, I think I backed it to 85, and then I was, and then I went back and did like 90. So basically, it's right in the middle. My only feedback to you is just read the instruction manual, um, get the right bit, and if you don't have, I believe it's called a hammer drill. If you don't have a hammer drill, more than likely you can rent one from. I know Home Depot is a big, you know, place near us, right? I'm sure everybody has one near them. Uh, they rent tools, right? It may not be that expensive to go down there if you don't have the right uh, tool. I wouldn't try with a standard drill or anything like that. His drill, like I said, made the job so simple. And I can't thank Jason uh, Fitzpatrick, who I call him Fitzmagic, for coming through. Uh, Tony as well. Um, setting the lift up, this is an older style one. And I don't know a lot about the history of lifts but this is a chain driven and apparently they're more sought after uh the cable driven is apparently you have to change the cable every so often i don't know you know how true that is but um we were able to adjust it's a little hard to see there no light well tony basically did the entire chain which we do not have it fully functioning yet i'll explain that in a minute but over here, there's this adjustment. And we adjust it, I think, with a big crescent wrench. And that kind of helps you depending on um, the, main, the main setup. And really what, what you're doing is we kind of measure to make sure that as that comes up, you know, it sits on these as, as the safety. Well, not the safety, but it sits on those as it's going up. And basically, uh, you know, you want as much of that down there to come across here. Like you wouldn't want it just dangling on, on the corner. So that's like one of the key things. Um, so I would say if you're looking to do the installation yourself, uh, you're obviously gonna need a couple buddies. Um, Tony and I, uh, because he has the rollback, he had bought some new uh, nice kind of little dollies. You may have seen those in some of the photos in the previous video. That allowed for us to roll it down super easy without breaking our backs or anything. And then because the electric is not officially hooked up out here, what that meant was 
we basically went and you know before the car was in the in the way we manually put the ramps all the way down and we said okay you know the ramps are down that day so uh my recommendation would be obviously to get the post get the, get the lift that you want okay in my case the best thing was a four post lift because me primarily i'm focused on storing another vehicle and i had a four inch slab right i mean there's differences on and you know the amount of slab uh, thickness and things like that uh, number two have some friends help you i do know um, from an installation perspective some people have told me they charge any, you know folks will charge anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars i don't know you know if that just based upon market value or whatever but you can kind of see there um this one's a little bit higher out than i probably should have had it but um it came together awesome um, we did from the first video, we did push out or pushed back in the lift a little bit. And the reason for that is we did some measuring. And although I wasn't too concerned because the S10, my 94 S10 is going to primarily sit here and it will drive in straight and then the cab will go up here, the truck's body dropped, you know, that type of thing. But what we did was when we had the car sitting here, of course, it was sitting down. I did take a look and, and, you know, looked at the overhead doors and, you know, obviously with them up, it's protruding more. Of course, with the door down, you know, it's, it's more outwards. So um, what I wanted to make sure was like, let's say, for instance, I was working on the Lincoln one weekend or it was a mobile and I had to put it up and there's a storm coming, whatever, and I got to park something underneath it. I didn't want to have a situation where this would have hit that at, at any point or just came so close that it was too close for comfort. So th those are a couple of the things that you'll take in. Um, I measured from here to the edge of the concrete. I measured, I measured from the ramps and I just kind of made sure it was all square. We measured from the side out, front and back. And um, again, it was not as hard as I would have thought. Um, the moving aspect of it, you know, you can see the way these are made. Um, they, it's pretty thick. It's pretty thick metal. But um, with it being kind of hollow the way it is there, for the most part, the way, you know, the metal is bent. It's awesome. So, uh, pretty cool stuff. Now, one, I am working on the electric. My dad's uh, really rather a family friend of ours, Fred. Uh, he's done a lot for my parents over the years. Um, he came out and he's checked this out a couple times. He scoped it all out. We figured out how many amps for everything. We figured out where we want to put outlets and all that. We're going to get the permit very soon. And then once we get the permit and that's issued, then um, we will spend probably a good you know day or two just going through, wiring everything, putting the vehicle up, figuring out right where we're going to have the wire come in for, or the electric rather, um, for the lift. This lift um, has, you have to have air, so an air compressor hooked up to it, and that is for the locks to let them, um, to let the locks, I guess, off so that the lift can come down. I'm going to work on getting a nice new air compressor. The one I have is, is, is crappy, so that'll be something down the road. But I'll try to insert a couple of photos into that past uh, commentary that I gave, and uh, just know that uh, we did follow the book to a T. And um, other than those, you know, a couple of those being a little bit further out, um, that's really the only thing. So you drill, you tap that wedge anchor down there. And I want to say I spent 90, 90 bucks on 16 of these. Actually 20. I take that back, 20. So here's what happened. When I ordered them, I want to say that they sold them in sets of 10. And of course I needed 16. But the cheaper ones they had, I may have saved 20 bucks. They didn't have those in stock. They were going to be like two weeks. So basically when I placed my order, they had 15 at the location you see there. And then they had to bring in five or whatever. And I was just like, you know, I didn't care because I wanted to bolt it down that weekend. This is what they look like. You got your big washer. Okay. And I'm not, you know, a bridge builder or an expert when it comes to hardware. But naturally, um, what I did was 
when I put this nut on here. I kind of put it to about right there. Obviously, if you've ever didn't have a ball joint puller and you had to, you know, knock out a ball joint, you know, and you were in a pinch, uh, although, you know, you don't want to mar up the top, but basically what I did is I tapped on that. This anchor, using that three and a quarter, um, that three quarter bit, this thing was just like pow, 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 within a few, and it was right down where it needed to be. And then I started tightening this, but basically the way the wedge anchor works, anybody that deals with this enough, um, as this goes down, it flares that out. And I tell you what, those things are freaking in there. Although, like I said, you could see a couple of mine are a little higher than others. Um, you know, this, this was a new slab that I had done and I think it had like the fiberglass stuff they, they put in it to reinforce it, some stuff like that. But, um, yeah, these things, and, and I'd rather spend 20 extra bucks. You know, I spent $90, you know, 80 some odd bucks. And, um, I know that I have good hardware, not something cheap that's going to break, uh, or risk, you know, life safety. And I forgot this was the bit that I had purchased. This was a three quarter tungsten carbide i think i said carbite carbide reinforced head but um it called for you know being able to do this with masonry but um again the i went ahead and gave it to jay uh, i figured he'd use it i wouldn't but um it wouldn't fit for his drill so that's it but again local fast and all was able to pick these up on lunch one day and uh, I needed 16, now I have four extra, so. So if Tony Boss Bowling or someone needs them, you know, I'll have a couple extra, so. I hope that helped. Stay on the rise, y'all, and uh, appreciate you watching and checking out the videos. Uh, consider subscribing and check out our lifestyle podcast via almost any podcast app. We got you. Peace. Four post lifts on the rise.